This is the Groom Theory Way Podcast with your host, Haven Hobbs. It's time to show you the Groom Theory Way. It's time to start the show. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy, Haven, man. I'm back with another episode of the Groom Theory Podcast. I got a dope entrepreneur today, man. He's a, Not only is he a cold businessman, he's a marketing guru. I'm excited today, man, because his his online presence is hilarious, man. It's funny. It's the epitome of what entrepreneurs should be doing. So with that being said, man, I got to shout out to my first guest. Well, not my first guest. First guest of today, uh, my man, Maurice, who's also known as... Mm. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Handsome Sexy, Mr. Mount Show <laughs> Motherfucking TV. That's what we go by. Yeah, my man, my man. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming to the pod, bro. Absolutely, Kane. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, man. So first thing I got to start with, man, I always talk to my, all my entrepreneurs. What's the, was there a person or someone or something that kind of inspired you to get into entrepreneurship? I'm excited to see how I got started. Absolutely. I feel like with everybody, it's always like that one person that's just like, Get your brain thinking because it's like you you be lost until you get around somebody who isn't lost. Mm-hmm. And then once you get around that person, it's like, okay, I see my path. So we're going to do a big shout out to Cooley, a.k.a. Mr. Lewis Bowden. Okay, okay. So Lewis Bowden is a uh, is an older gentleman I met when I worked at Spectrum. Okay. He's a cable technician and uh, he kind of was like a father figure to me when I was working there. So yeah, I went, yeah. yeah. So he, uh, he really showed me the ropes with a lot of things mm-hmm. just as far as just like, just living, just life. Yeah, like not yeah. about like business or anything. Yeah. But he spoke on business and kind of got me to looking at the bigger picture. Mm. And from there, you know, I kept in contact with him even after I worked there. And I still look at him like a father figure. Yeah. So I was like, this dude really like he, yeah. he, he punched he punched me right in the kidneys. Absolutely. With that, man. Absolutely. I like that yeah. man. Yeah. Nah, that's cool, man. Mentors and role models, man, like that's vital for 100%. entrepreneurs, man, because some people are not exposed to those type of people. They not. And yeah. And uh so I gotta I gotta ask you though, man, because talk to me. How was it? How what type of person were you in high school? I'm, was you like the, the class hey, clown guy? Because let me, like... let me start. Let me let me start out. Let me start out by saying. Let me move right, up out the right, way. Right, right, right. If you went to high school with me, <laughs> and you see me, right, or right. you make a status about me, listen. My senior year, they did these awards. I went to McClure. Okay, okay. They did these. They did this award program yeah. where you get like little trophies when mm-hmm. you were senior. You leave in high school, of course. They want something to remember. But I got two awards. Okay, okay. One of them. <laughs> Class clown, of Man, course. Okay, I can see that. Course. I can see that. <laughs> Second one is most likely to be remembered. They kind of mm-hmm. tie neck and neck because you're yeah. going to always remember the class clown. Right, right. And so, yeah, man, I, I went to high school and I shut that motherfucker down. Right. And I cuss out, bleep, bleep it out if you hear it. Bleep it out because I'm going I'm to be custom. I'm going to try to keep it at a minimum. Right, right, right. But yeah, man, I was a class clown, man. Yeah. Let me tell you. I used to, uh, Spirit Week, mm-hmm. I used to come in crazy. I had the Heelys. You know what Heelys is? Yeah, 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 yeah. Had yeah. some Heelys, man, rolling around school. I was the first person at my school to do it. Okay, Probably okay. the first person at a lot of schools to do yeah, it. But I put yeah. some Heelys on, rolling around that thing, man. I, uh, I used to go all out with a lot of stuff. Yeah. I didn't have a lot of money, but I still like my my atmosphere. Yeah. Just me as a person, just yeah. as a whole. For sure. It's like I was live. Yeah. I was yeah. alive. There's never a dead moment. <laughs> always smiling, always. Always. Cry- you tell. Yeah, they yeah. be like, you remember Maurice from high school? Yeah, he used to walk around with the speaker blasting <laughs> in the highway. I used to have a little JBL boombox. Right, right. Attach it to my book bag. Five and little wheezy. The, the whole the, the whole nine. The whole the whole nine. That's good. So was it like a feeling that you get when you able to make people laugh, man? Man. How, how did that feel? How was, what type of endorphins, man. It yeah, okay. released endorphins, man. Because <laughs> right. it's like, I don't be trying. Yeah. It's a difference when you got somebody that's trying and somebody who's just like actually doing it. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I just actually, it's just me. This is my lifestyle. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can hardly talk to women because right, they'd right. be like, man, I can't take you serious. <laughs> but they'd be like, I'll be serious, man. I'll be serious. Like, you can't right. talk to me because you don't take me serious. I'm serious. Right, right, right. Like, nah, but yeah, man, it's just like, it's just me. That's just yeah. my character. So it's just like, I probably came out the womb laughing yeah. if you asked my mom. Man, that's cold, man. I, I realize it's very important to have those type of people in the circle, man. Like, someone's always smiling, always positive. You know what I mean? Giving out that good vibrations, man. That's a fact. So, yeah, so salute to you, man. Because I just, I, I could just tell the type of person you was just... Based on your content, man. Yeah, and it shows. It shows. It man. shows. Being authentic. It's, it's you know normal. what I'm saying? It's, Absolutely. It's, it's like it's, it's not, not a gimmick. It's not. It's a gimmick. not. It's, I, I wouldn't say improv, but it's not. Yeah. It's not made up. Yeah, yeah. It's like this is straight off the dome. Right, Every video right. I make here, customer. Yeah, right. <laughs> right for real. For <laughs> real. <laughs> say this real quick. <laughs> Absolutely. I see some. So I, at high school, so uh, did you? I know social media is probably pretty big during. Correct. That. Yeah. So did you start creating content? 
in when, high school or were you yeah, young? Yeah, so jumping from eighth grade to freshman year. Yeah. Went that's probably the summertime of like freshman year. Yeah. Uh, before I got to eighth grade freshman, that's when I really started getting on like Facebook. Yeah. Back in like 2011, 2012, Facebook was the thing back yeah, in the day. Yeah, for sure, for so sure. So I kicked it off like making memes. I used to make memes okay, on, on okay, Facebook. Yeah. And so when I used to post them, they used to get like 500, 1,000, mm-hmm. 2,000. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing good. Right, right. I got to <laughs> keep the momentum going. So from there, I just went to start to make videos. Yeah. And, making videos, just posting, like, just random stuff, and people will rock with it. Yeah, like, yeah. I would watch the videos and be like, man, that's corny. I'm going yeah. to post it, though. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah, I just yeah. post it, yeah. and they rock with it, get 100,000 shares, yeah. and, man, yeah, I think the video that kicked off back in 2012, and a few people probably remember this, mm-hmm. but I had, it was this fight. I had seen these girls fighting at a park. Yeah. And the reason why the video got, it real, the video made it world, so I had to find it, though. Oh, shut up? Yeah. It got like a hundred thousand likes, like a million views, yeah, two yeah, million. Yeah. But it was me, it was a commentary behind the video. Okay. <laughs> I was I was I was behind it. I was a cameraman, right. of course, recording the fight, but I was talking. Yeah. Like I was talking to the girls that was fighting. Right, and I right. was talking to people around me and I was talking to the camera. Okay. So okay. it was a commentary <laughs> behind it that made it funny. Yeah. Like, and it was just that video just took off. And I think after that, I was like, oh yeah, I gotta keep going. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a second thought, like, why am I doing this? Or, nah, it was just like this is boom. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can entertain people. Nah, that's yeah, that's cold, man. Then so, so after high school, did you decide to go like college or trade school or did I did, you get a job? I did, yeah, I did. So yeah. um after high school, I went straight to I wanted to, I wanted to go to university. Yeah. yeah. Like I I wanted to be big dog. I yeah. wanted to when I went to I wanted to be the person that went to uh HBCU and okay. pledge as a Q. I okay. wanted to man, okay. I, I just wanted to be that so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. but I just couldn't couldn't make it to that point yeah. just because of some stuff. There was some home issues, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Gotta deal with family and stuff. Cause right. it takes a lot to go to college. Yeah, you, for sure. You go, you can't go. Yeah. So I just went to Flow Valley. Yeah. Went to give me my uh get my general studies. Yeah, yeah. Um just to, just to have it. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. just to have it. Then from there. I went to trade school, mm-hmm. and of course, I started working for the cable company. Mm-hmm. That's where I met again. Shout out, yeah. it was Bold, my brother. The cable company, uh, what, was it Spectrum? Spectrum. At Spectrum. the time, it was Charter. Okay, Charter. back in like 2015, 16, 16, 17, it was Charter. Yeah, but now it's Spectrum. But yeah, so so, okay, so was that your first job? No, my first job was actually Six Flags. Six Flags. I was working okay. Six Flags. It was summertime jobs. Right, right. Everybody that was my age, that was in high school, worked at Six Flags. Okay, okay. Six so Flags was, was that joint. It was cracking. Yeah, we'd take we'd take the uh, the bus. To the uh, Hanley station, it was just a, a bus station yeah. in uh, North County. Okay. Take that, and then from there, it's, it, it'll be like school buses, which oh. we consider as shuttle buses. Yeah. It'll take us from there all the way to Six Flags. Because who mama wanted to drive them from North County to Eureka? Right, that's right. That's a long drive. <laughs> 45 hike, minutes later, then you got to come back and get right. them and then drive back. <laughs> now they had shuttle buses. So. That's dope, though. Yeah. yeah. Being 15 years old, <laughs> yeah, working yeah. and getting a job. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was in there. No, I you was in there. there. Yeah, you I was in there. I was, I was, was it my sophomore year? Yeah, yeah. also oh, your sophomore year. Yeah, okay. I started working yeah, yeah. my sophomore year. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. I was never really the sports guy. Yeah, okay. like my family and stuff. They grew up around sports and stuff. But like me, I was all about electronics. Yeah, yeah. like I was all about electronics. I never really was into sports. I mean, I try. I play baseball. Right, right, right. But like getting money and just yeah. like electronics was yeah. my thing. So what type of electronics like computers and stuff computers, like computers, cameras. Yeah, yeah. Phones. Yeah, man, yeah. I just used to just play with a lot of stuff, man. That's I dope. Just, so you you got yeah. so you was you was doing that back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of got was you. real for me with yeah. that. A lot of people didn't know about electronics, you know. Right. You know, my generation was like the generation of where electronics first started. Like it kicked off, but it was like my generation like we the last generation that really had like a portion of no electronics yeah. and electronics. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I kind of like tied into that. Mm. So, shoot, I used to just like, I had a computer teacher at, at McClure. I hope you don't get fired. <laughs> he used to give me little, <laughs> give, used to give me little computer stuff, you right. know, from the computer lab, take it home, right, you right. know, hook that up to my hard drive. Okay, cool. We got this going on. Yeah, I was just a nerd. Bro. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, came. that's dope. So, okay, so you did Six Flags first job. Mm-hmm. Then after... After Six back. Flags, um, I had a cousin that worked at McDonald's. Okay, okay. So I started working at McDonald's. Yeah. The one where you used to Okay, yeah, over there. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I heard about you yeah, in okay. the barbershop. Yeah, <laughs> okay, it's okay. A, McDonald's on Lindbergh. I used yeah. to, uh, shout out to Jamie. She got me my job at McDonald's. My yeah. cousin Jamie. Um, uh, I was working there for a long time. McDonald's was like a back-end job. Okay, okay. Like, it was one of those jobs where even if I migrated to another job, yeah. I could still have that on my belt. Absolutely. Because I was young. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 16 yeah. years yeah, old. Yeah, trying, yeah, trying to get some money out here, man. Making $400 yeah, every, yeah. every two weeks. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm banking, yeah, you know? Yeah, you good. You know $400 every two weeks. <laughs> eight, 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 eight dollars what, 75 cents an hour? Right, right. I was making money, right, right, bro. Right, right. Going to school, buying the freshest J's. Yeah, J's. When you, you a soft boy? And you got money. You in there. You in there. You in there. I, I, and and I, I was I, funny too. Yeah, yeah. But they just could never take me serious. Hey, it'd be like that sometimes, though, man. It'd be like that. <laughs> they so, never take me serious. Okay, so after okay after college, you went to the trade school, and 
after the trade school? Is that when you went with Spectrum? Uh, or? no, out uh, trade school was like in between. But uh, I yeah. started working for. I had a few little small jobs yeah. in between. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I had a lot of jobs. They, yeah. they, people knew me. I was working. I was yeah, right. a working you man. Was just grinding. Yeah. So y'all had been a grinder. Yeah. A portion that was there was just me helping out at home, taking yeah. care of my mom. Yeah, um, yeah. But from McDonald's to Spectrum, Quick Trip, I even worked at the Nike factory. It was the yeah. Nike factory yeah. uh, somewhere in uh, Wilder Springs. Uh, shoot, just a lot of jobs. Yeah, a lot of jobs. And then, and then your last job, my last job was... AT&T. AT&T. Okay. That was the the highest job, like highest point of career path I could have gotten with a job. Yeah, yeah. Because AT&T showed me a lot. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Working at AT&T, because you got to think, I started working at AT&T when I was, I want to say, 23, mm-hmm. 20, 22, 23. Yeah. So me being there, I was working with guys who were 45, 50. Mm-hmm. Like about to retire, ready about to retire. retire yeah, you just... know, coming in as young, spunky. Yeah. So... <laughs> black dude, just like... This right, dude so, in her showing out. Right, right. So I was going, I was working. I was doing grinding. my thing. Up and I was grinding. So how, was how long were you at that job? Um, Up until 2020. Okay. So how many years? Like, was it like three, four years or? About, about three and a half. Three, three and a half years. Three and a half, four years. And so you said, that, I remember you saying that that job kind of taught you more about mountain yeah. TVs and stuff. Yeah. So it didn't necessarily teach me about mountain TVs. I yeah. kind of taught myself about mountain TVs. Yeah. It, that job taught me discipline. Okay. It taught me how to work with tools. Mm. It taught me uh, customer service. Big. Big well, customer service. most of, every job going to teach you customer service, yeah. but it's up to you and your brain yeah. how you fathom the information that's coming to you. Right. But AT&T, because you know, AT&T been around for a long, a long time. time. Southwestern yeah. Bell, you know, right. so they, they teach you all of this stuff and they instill it in your mind. Yeah. And so I took all of that yeah. and I pushed it on to my business, which mm. we're going to talk about in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I went from there. Uh, I Took a couple of tools home. Uh, you can't fire me now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I took a couple of tools home. Yeah. Went and did some stuff around the house. My mom's told me she wanted a TV in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, she wanted to be one of those fancy mamas. Put a TV yeah. in the kitchen. All right, cool. Yeah. Mounted the TV in the kitchen. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Was, was it kind of easy for you? Was yeah. it easy to do? Yeah. I took my phone, sent my friends. Oh, come do mine. Right, okay, right. cool. She, I did my friends. We got friends. My mama said she want. All right, I'm going to have to charge y'all now. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to charge y'all. I can't, y'all waste my time on these TVs. Right, and I, right. I got to start charging some right. Man. I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of yeah. crazy because my brother in law, man, he's uh, he's big on electronics. For sure. He's just cold with his hands. Like, I remember anything I needed, man, he just knew how to do Hands on. Like, man. I, I ain't gonna lie, I get kind of envious, man. Like, yeah. this, like, like, how do you, like, I don't know. It just, it's, it's natural. It's natural. Bro. Yeah. It's like, it just comes to you. Like, yeah. you just get something in your hand. Like, okay, no, 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 no. Here you go. Oh, I got you. Like, you know, I gotta look. Yeah. I can't read the instructions. I go straight to YouTube. Oh, geez. You know what I'm saying? I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean because I hate sitting there. Flip, flip, right, flip. Right. Me, in my mind, the way when I work with stuff, like, I don't even look at the instructions no more. Yeah, yeah. I just try to put it together myself. Yeah. If I can't do it, YouTube. I ain't reading. That, man, um, that's, that's a gift, I know I'm a good, man. I'm, a, I'm a very fluent reader. Yeah. I just don't like reading. Yeah, because like, be, sometimes the instructions be kind of backwards. Dude, that's why I kill you. ever go something before I kill Yes, I have. They put pictures in there. Fuck the words. <laughs> we gonna, we gonna a pictures, right. picture of a little bloppy man. Right, right. Just putting stuff together. Okay, this is this going to okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. And learn taught me a lot about uh tools. I learned about a lot of tools when I started working for ATT. Man, that's amazing, man. That's it amazing, is. man. So you started working at ATT, you learned about the tools, mm-hmm. and you still content creating. Correct. And so that's the so correct. When did you so once you start learning how to mount TVs, did you think that was like might have been a niche for you? Like I'm just on post. Funny skits. Honestly, oh, yeah, I, I, that didn't even cross my mind. I okay. just was doing it. Just, just I was milking AT and T. Okay, ha uh-huh, you can't fire me part two. <laughs> I was milking AT and T, so yeah. I would hook up internet services. From there, I would go ahead and I tell the customers move into a new house. Oh, I yeah. see a TV right there. Yeah, I know how to mount TVs. You, I could put this up forty bucks for yeah. you right now. You yeah. know, I got the mount in the car. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Oh, well, go ahead. Mm, now, I'm out. So right. I was doing that for right. for about a year. Before I was like, okay, a lot of people know I mount TVs now. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going back to work because I, I at that point I had started posting videos yeah. on Instagram, but it wasn't like major videos. It was just like be me. I post my work on my yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. But AT and T, they got a team of people who follow you. Okay. They gonna they gonna look at you. They gonna find you. Yeah, yeah. They gonna find you. <laughs> but uh, they was looking at my social media. The supervisor came to me one day like, you know, conflict of interest. You know, yeah. if you don't want to do it outside of work. Like okay. You can't, you can't post it. Like why? Why having you do uniform on or something, or then what you have uniform and posting? Or? I think he was more so saying like, don't post on social media if you're gonna do this because yeah. we know you work there. Oh. So like the head of head might come, the vice president might yeah. say, hey, you post on social media, who tools you using, or mm. or you you doing side work? You may be doing work for AT and T outside of AT and T. You know, conflict of interest could get you fired. Yeah. So I'm like, man, 
I'll do what I want. <laughs> you know, I still kept posting. I wasn't worried about them. Right, man. right, right. At that point, I had already like a, a set of customers who referred me because, you know, word of mouth go a long way quick, if you know quick, my brother. Quick, quick, word of mouth go a quick, long way. Quick. So you do 10 people and they tell 10 people, yeah. them 10 people going to tell 10 more people. Yeah. Sure enough, you got 100 people trying to get services. Right, so right. It just went from there to me just starting posting, you know, that. And I was like, and I was still doing skits yeah. in between me working for AT&T, but I wasn't doing a lot because AT&T was training. Yeah, like, right. You working. Yeah, working day and night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Grinding. Yeah, sometimes six days a week. Mm -hmm. So I was I never really had time to like record, yeah. you know, because I would still have to make time for myself. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. So and so then what moment was it when you realized like, you know what, I, you know, ATT is a blessing job and everything, but I think I think I could take that leap of faith and be become an entrepreneur Ooh. and create my own business. I remember like it was yeah. just I'll never, yeah, look, look, forget, you never forget that you know, story. You can't, right? You that can't. That's one of them stories like you got to tell your kids. <laughs> you got kids. to. You like, got this to. Is, like, it was amazing how it yeah, happened. Like, yeah, I want, we want to hear about that, man. I was at a customer house, right? Yeah. This was, I had just got off work. Okay. You know, she was like, she needed services. It was probably like 8 o'clock at night. I'm like, man, I'm tired. Whatever. It's yeah. cool. You know what I'm saying? Took my work shirt off. Doing services. I'm like, how can I? Uh, in my head, I was as I was working, I'm like, and this was at the time. This was like one of my first like big jobs because I, I had a big job I had to do there. Yeah. And so I'm like, how can I kind of mix this like with my content? Yeah. And so I gave, gave her the phone. I was just like, I'm finna get on top of the mount. Yeah. I said, she said, what? <laughs> like, what? What you mean you finna get on? I said, I'm finna get on top of her. You got a ladder? <laughs> she pulled out a ladder. Yeah. Look green ladder. You know. I got on top of the mount. I said, just start recording. Yeah. She was like, well, what do you want me to say? I said, just say what you feel like saying, but I'm going to say everything. Yeah. So she recorded. I'm saying my spiel. I'm 170 pounds. I can sit on this mount. Yeah. Then you choose me to mount your motherfucking TV. <laughs> Boom. Right. Like, bet. Right. Took that video. I uploaded that same night. Yeah. A day went past. It didn't really do too much. It got like a couple hundred on, yeah, on yeah. Instagram. That's why I first posted on Instagram. Yeah. That was the first post on Instagram? No, that was the first. The first, the first TV mount post. Okay, okay, Like, okay. as far as, like, this, this comical. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was, like, the first TV mount post. <laughs> it went from there to, like, the next day. And this was, like, during the summertime. Yeah. So, the next day after that, it was probably, like, a weekend. Yeah. Um, I was at a homegirl pool party. We was all chilling. And I had been on my phone all day because I was just, I, don't, I guess I was working. I don't know. I had been on my phone. I had been on Instagram. Yeah. So we was at a pool party. I was drunk. <laughs> I'm chilling. <laughs> She said, everybody like, everybody like, where Maurice at? Like, he in the pool. We yeah. all chilling, throwing, throwing the football around the pool. Look at this. I'm looking at the video. I said, that's my video. That's Shade Room. Oh! Oh! That's Shade Room. They said, they just post you on Shade Room. I said, what? Oh, shit. Yeah. So she like, oh, my God. So the video, I'm talking about millions of views on Shade Room. Yeah, yeah. And a whole bunch of comments. People. And I was still working at AT&T at the time. So yeah. music video. I mean, I said music video. I had millions of, view, millions of views on uh, Shade Room. I'm looking at my page. It's already at like 400,000 likes. I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah. 400,000 likes? And I was like at 4,000. I had like four or 5,000 followers. Yeah, yeah. From, like, it was like one of those moments where you hear people talk about, but it don't yeah, be real. Yeah, I'm refreshing yeah. my page. 4,000 followers. 6,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 14,000. I'm like, every time I refresh, yeah. it's like an extra thousand. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, dude. The first thought in my mind, I got to keep going. Yeah. This ain't no star story. I've been, yeah. this is like, this not new for me. I've been had the right. publicity, right, you right. know, when I was younger doing the videos. Yeah, so I'm right. like, this not new to me. This yeah. just, it's just so happened. They, I was a blessing that they were posted that. Right, right. So, and went from there to just me. I just was like, fuck it. I got to keep going. Yeah, so I'm yeah. continue to make videos back to back. Yeah. So at that point, um, I started getting too many customers. Mm. So um, so when I hit, so a lot of people just start hitting you up like, hey, can you mind my TV? Yeah, I can imagine the business. Yeah, Why are you still like, working? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it was like, okay, I had a choice. Either just stay in a nine to five world, yeah. uh, take a leap of faith. Hopefully I got a parachute on. Yeah. But if I don't, I'm going place flat to the ground. Yeah. Um, it was a situation that happened at 2020. That's why when COVID happened. Yeah, yeah. So ATT was firing people. Yeah. It was letting people go, yeah. you know, for just different reasons, you know. Right. And so I was on the list to get, you know, let go. But they was like, you can get rehired in about a year if you fill out. Yeah. So that kind of like stuck with me. Yeah. Like when a job tell you, we finna fire you, but you can come back in a year. Yeah. You like. Oh. I'm like, you mm. So I thought about it for a second. I'm like, and they was union at the time. So we talked to a union rep. Yeah. Um, Talked to you. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just quit. I said, tell my Because if you, you had two options, you know. Like I said, you know, you quit and get rehired, uh, but they technically don't fire you. Yeah. But 
if you get fired from AT and T, it go to it's like AT and T is a Fortune five hundred company. Right, right. You got on a you know they pull up your 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 list. You get fired from AT and T. That kind of hinders you from yeah, other places. Yeah, that's the major. Like, what yeah. you get fired for? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. If I say COVID, you know, it may may believe it may not. Yeah. But so I was like, I'm gonna just quit. And so I uh, I quit that that I quit like it was like a Thursday. I think that it was like a Wednesday. That Thursday or Friday, I think my check hit. My check hit. My checks at the time was like twenty five hundred. Yeah, yeah. AT and paying nice. Yeah, yeah, good yeah, money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> took that last check because yeah. at the time I was just using AT and T tools. Hi, you can't fire me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At the time, I took that last two twenty five two thousand dollars check. I went straight to Home Depot. Mm, invested in y'all. Invested. Mm. I bought a shitload of tools. Yeah. I had the Impala at the time. Yeah. Loaded up all my tools in like a little tote. Yeah. With Impala. Just got to work. Yeah. I was like, all right, this is this is the start. Like yeah. I didn't know how to book customer. I mean, <laughs> but from working at the companies that I worked for, yeah. I knew how the system worked. Yeah, you know about I the knew, system. Yeah, just... yeah. I knew for a fact one customer service is on top. That yeah. that, that 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 like, you know, trump trumps everything. Yeah. Customer service. Cause if you got customer service, but you bad at what you do, yeah. customer service is still going on top. He was a good technician. He was horrible. So I'll hire somebody else, but he was still good. Though. Yeah, yeah. So I learned a lot about like how to book people in and yeah. customer service for all the jobs that I worked there, yeah. honestly. And so yeah, from freaking what was that, 2020 of it was that August, September? No, it was like November. Yeah. From there, I just swept everything under the rug. I'm got my business now. And got to it. Yeah. And so I gotta ask you this because you know, a lot of people, entrepreneurs, like the people think entrepreneurs, like I'm gonna be entrepreneur, entrepreneur. They don't work. Like, they, they don't understand how hard it is. It's you know what I'm saying? It's one thing. Oh my god. You know what I'm saying? Like one thing you have to you know, open a, you know, when you decide you want to open a business, mm -hmm. but there's another thing when it's, when it's time to market your business. Man. Now, can you touch on, cause your marketing, your marketing game is crazy, bro. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's catchy. It's funny. Like. It's gorilla. You, I call it, it, they call it gorilla. Gorilla. Marketing. Gorilla yeah, marketing. Gorilla I see you, you got your truck. You got your, that's gorilla. That's uh, yeah. One-on-one. -on -one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you drive through neighborhoods. <laughs> my, 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 my kids. Let me, let me take a picture. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Can you, can you just tell all the entrepreneurs, man, about how important gorilla marketing is, period. And how they got you to where you're at right now. All right. First and foremost, yeah. if you're an entrepreneur, yeah. shout out to your success. <laughs> keep going. Don't stop. Please right. don't stop. You want to make sure you keep going always and forever. Um, guerrilla marketing is, uh, to me, guerrilla marketing is coming straight forward through the kill. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen like the Old Spice commercials. Yeah, where, for sure. Where, for uh, sure. Terry Crews. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, pop yeah. his, you know, pick yeah. muscles and stuff. That's guerrilla marketing. Right. They're coming straight for you. You know, they all force, you know, or, or. I think State Form had a few guerrilla marketing commercials and stuff, but um, to me, when you guerrilla market, um, I don't really have an audience, a specific audience that I'm looking for. Yeah. I don't. It, it's not. Oh, I'm looking for the young group, the old group. The I'm just in a general. Yeah. Because I've had customers tell me, "Oh, my daughter sent me your video. She's 12. She was just on TikTok <laughs> scrolling." Or that's I've amazing. had, cool. yeah, I've had you know middle aged married couples. I'm gonna send you to my dad because he don't be on Instagram, but I like your videos. And I know you good do good work, right, so I'm gonna right. send you to my dad. And he's 98 years old, mm -hmm. so. Try not to cuss in his house. When I get there, he didn't already told me. Oh, they showed me a video. Toy, toy stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, um, guerrilla marketing. You got to like I, I base it base it upon like just a wide spectrum of people. Um, if you know you got the got the work to 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 pretty much assess any customer. Like, for instance, lash techs can go to men and say, "Oh, I want to do your lashes." You know, just just specifically around women. Um, with me. Our TVs are gonna be around. TV's been around for a long right, time. Right. So electrical been around for a long time. People need shelves hung. Mm -hmm. People need, you know, mirrors hung. People have a home. Yeah. So yeah. our minds is based off of people with homes, businesses, mm -hmm. people who like electronics. Um, I base that upon that. And so with me mixing my comedy with my marketing, it kind of it sparks the attention because yeah. I be on Instagram, I scroll and I see a guy mounting TVs, he doing a little reel where he just showing the TV. Going over, showing yeah. the TV again. Cool. That's cool. I want to put my face in it. Yeah. I want to put my face in. I want you to see, yeah. like, put my face in it. That's why my <laughs> face is on my van, bro. Yeah. So they know, like, this is who you gonna get. Yeah. Well, how I am on social media is what you gonna get at your house. Right. Right. Unless you work from home, then I gotta be quiet. You know? I made a video about that. Man. Yeah, right. yeah. You work. You work from home. I'm gonna be a little quiet. I seen I'm that like, you was with the whisper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna still cuss you out. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's a little lower though. Not, not it's a little lower tone. But yeah. yeah. Um. I feel like I want to reach out to my customers and grab them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and pull them to the screen by their shirt. I'm gonna hem you up. For you know, sure. So tell you, you're gonna get my services. Yeah. You're gonna like it. You're gonna love it. 
Absolutely. Hire me. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much like how I like got tunnel vision with my gorilla yeah, marketing. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I remember like a story mm-hmm. about myself when I knew I was that guy and it came yeah. like cutting hair. Like Ooh. I got something special here. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you know. Yeah, when you know, like, okay, I, I knew I was confident in my, my skills, but then like when I knew, like, okay, I'm one of the elites. That's yeah. how I felt. Like, what do you, when did you know that what you offered in your work, when did you know it was, when it was special? When you a knew lot you of people, special? so a lot of people, it's different ways that you can know you're special. Because yes. you got one, of course, the customer's telling you yeah. back to back, like, you know, I love this. Right, right. Me, it's a, it's personal for me. Yeah. I knew it was special. And you could probably relate when yeah. I say this. I knew it was special when I was in somebody's house working. Mm-hmm. Whenever I would go in somebody's house work, and I would try to make it so perfect. Mm-hmm. I would try to make it look like I would on my own. Yeah. yeah you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm going to your house, making yours look like what I would like in my house. Yeah, for sure. And I take passion in it. I take my time with it. I'm efficient with it. I grow with it. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I knew like this was something special for me when I when I would go into customer houses yeah. and I would see some work that other people did yeah. that I'm not even working on. It would be a TV in the kitchen. I'm working in the living room. Yeah. When I finish that TV in the living room, can I can I fix this please? Because yeah. I don't. I came here to work and yeah. I don't want your family here saying like, oh, he, what happened? You know, right. Let me fix that real quick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's so you go above and beyond like, exactly yeah. all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, every that, that's, time. that's smart, like, man. That's a lot of people don't know about that. Man. They don't. They yeah. don't. Going above and beyond is is good. I'm a great technician. Yeah, yeah. I do what I'm supposed to do for sure, man. That's man, that's dope. That's so dope, man. So, yeah. can you, I want you also talked about because people they think just entrepreneur, bro. It's like that's the lifestyle. It's, but people don't understand. Mm. Like they don't understand how hard it really is. Mm. I think like, I think when, it's watered down now. Yeah, for it's sure. Watered, Especially since COVID. People nothing wanna, against content creators. Yeah, like you on YouTube. Nothing against y'all, but it's watered down because y'all the ones making it seem like it's so easy. Yeah, when it, when it's it's it, not. I understand, man. Like especially being an entrepreneur, when you, what if you wake up, you got to get to work. You got to get to work. Ain't no just chilling. Like you know what I'm saying. You Ain't know no you days off. What you don't have when you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> Right. Tom. Yeah. Tom, you don't have no more time. Yeah. All your time is gone. You you thought all the nine to fives you had in the back in the day, them nah, when you're an entrepreneur and you doing it yourself, time is of an essence. Yeah, for sure. Because time is not on your side. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's not. It's, it's not, not on your side, man. So And so can you can you explain can you, well just not explain, just can you just talk about like for me, like I'm big on routine. For like, sure. I'm a father. Ooh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm big, you know what I'm saying. Yes, I'm, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm real big on routine, man. Absolutely, like, especially in my life, man. Like where I have I have a family, right? I have three girls that's very active, and being an entrepreneur when I first started cutting hair. You girl dad, girl dad, bro. Girl me dad, too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, welcome to hey, welcome to the club, brother. Six months in, man. Yeah, Six congratulations. In. You're gonna yes, love it, man. Sir. Yes, You're gonna sir. love it. And so I had a balance. I learned balance. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I grinded so hard in my 20s to now yeah. when I'm in my 30s. You know, I work three days a week, but I still work every day though. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. I do other things. So Absolutely. can you just t- just touch upon touch upon like your routine and how you how do you keep yourself going every day? Because it's it's mental, bro. Sometimes people go through little hardships yeah. where like you might you never know a, a disaster or a disease or a death in the family, anything, man. Yeah. Just talk about your routine on a daily basis, man. Because people see your, your vibrant personality, they're like, they, they don't know what's behind, the, know what's behind scenes, the scenes, man. Just touch on that just a little bit, man. man for the people, first, man. First thing I want to say, <laughs> say it with me now. Discipline. Discipline. Yeah, Discipline is the number one rule to being an entrepreneur. Let me yeah. tell you why. Discipline will teach you right and wrong. Discipline will get you up in the morning and put you to bed at night. Discipline will show you the path that you need to take the right way. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so with me, over time of, of being an entrepreneur, I, like I've been I've been an entrepreneur for three and a half, four years now. Mm. Um, discipline. I always had discipline instilled yeah. in me. Yeah. But it's a different level when you're doing it for your business. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, me being, you know, the person I am, uh, TV Mountain, um, I'm a hot commodity when yeah. it comes to this. So a yeah. lot of people are requesting me. Yeah, yeah. And so I still have to give my time to my family. yeah. To my friends and then customers, yeah, cause yeah. they the customers they gonna be there. Mm-hmm. Your family and friends, you gotta make sure you keep them tight, yeah, cause you want that legacy to live on. But um, you gotta have a lot of discipline when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Um, it's hard if you haven't been disciplined already before coming to entrepreneur. But like my routine to keep like my customers in line and keep myself in line mm-hmm. is just straight, just. Jotting everything down. Mm. Gotta write, write your stuff down. Don't just yeah. think about it. Yeah. Cause you can think about it and you know what thinking causes? Procrastination. That's the killer, bro. That's the killer. 
That's, that's the killer. killer. Luckily, I've never been a procrastinator. Yeah, that's, but I've seen blessing. people. That's yeah, a blessing. Yeah, I seen I seen a lot of people. I helped a lot of people through procrastination because mm-hmm. it's like you you telling your brain to do something, but you know, it's more to it. Like, for instance, you want to tell yourself, "Oh, I gotta go," because I'm, I'm I'm a gym fanatic. I'm a gym yeah. rat. I go yeah. to the gym. I go to the gym that's, four in the morning. Yeah. I get up at four in the morning. Be there by four thirty. Be yeah. finished by six. My day ain't even started yet. Yeah. That ain't even started my day. <laughs> I still gotta go home, make my food, yeah. clean up, yeah. get ready for work, yeah. go get material, talk to customers. You Don't know, forget man. about. I still gotta get people in. Customer service, man. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta now, be a one. Yeah. Now I got a daughter now, so <laughs> I gotta make sure my daughter good in the yeah. morning time. You know what I'm saying? So. um it's just a routine that you got to make that works for you, not for nobody else. Do something that works for you because if you can't function right, then everything else crumbles. Mm-hmm. Imagine yourself mm-hmm. at the top of that pyramid. You know what I'm saying? You look, you're at the top of the pyramid and you, everything else is trickled down. So you got to make sure that you function right in order for you to function right for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, discipline. That's a message right there, brother. That is. That That's is. That's a message right there. For real. For, it, it's, it's serious. It's life. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you nothing from, Absolutely. from people talking. I'm, I'm telling you from experience. Right, right. I'm an experienced soldier out nah, here. for real. That's I, real. I went through the hardships so y'all can have it easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So y'all can have it nah, easy. That's real because so, I'm like the same way, man. I wake up five in the morning, I get to the gym at five thirty, and absolutely. like my wife knows she like I can't break my routine for nothing. Oh, man. You, and he, the you thing know what is, mean? when you break that routine, you, your whole day throw off. You might up. get a headache at nine o'clock. Like, man, like, what's damn. going on? <laughs> you like, know what I'm saying? Going? Like, if I don't get this workout in the morning, man, brother, like, I swear to Jesus, I'm like, man. It's, it's mandatory. It's you know mandatory. What I'm I tell everybody all the time, I have to make sure my mental is strong yes. so I can make sure my I'm good for everybody else. You know, because you know my kids, plus you're a girl dad now. Yeah. You know, your girl's going to feel your energy. You know what I'm saying? She's going to feel like, is daddy okay today? They, they, they pick up on everything. Yeah. Like, hey, dad, did you work out this morning? You know yeah. what I mean? Because they know like. Because, you know, man, we, we quiet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't really talk about, you know, our emotions and stuff yeah, like that. For we sure. just, we thinking about it. Yeah. And it's like, you just got to go through it. That's real, bro. That's, that's real. That's real. And so I got to ask you, so I got, you know, for the upcoming entrepreneurs, man. Yeah. What word of advice? Would you give them? I know you talked about discipline. What, mm-hmm. What's another What's another gem that you will give these entrepreneurs before they take that that leap of faith in the in the world of entrepreneurship? Patience. Mm. Patience. You want to make sure you have patience. <laughs> and let me let me let me break this down for you real quick. Everything don't come overnight. Mm. Now you you get you one in a million chance that somebody might win the lottery. All right. You still get taxed for that, you know. But anyway, patience. Yeah. Patience is what you want. Um. A little bit about myself with patience. Uh, like I said, I started off, I wanted uh, a nice commercial van, you know, for myself, but I knew it took progress to get there. Mm. Um, it took a progress of me having, going through, I had an Impala. I had an Impala SS that broke down every day. <laughs> Shout out to my mechanic, Chris. To get you together. Forever, man. I'm talking about, <laughs> he, man, his, his girl got tired of me calling. Right. Like, he calling you again about the Impala? Damn. <laughs> Man, and Paul it says broke down damn near every day, but yeah. I was thugging it to right, work. Right. So I was like, after that, I got me a Dodge Grand Caravan. Okay, you know, okay. A little white minivan that had six thousand miles. Yeah. It was a it was an old male male van. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was worth it. Right. And then from there, stacked up some money, got me my commercial van. As y'all see now, big black jack. That's what I call them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, wrap, you wrapped them all up. They wrapped them all up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's my bumblebee out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Telling you about this timeline, you would think, oh, he got that in a year. Yeah. No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. That took about five years mm. to get all that. That took about five years mm. to get all that. That wasn't no overnight process because it's like, okay, I got a car. How do I migrate to the next? Yeah. I still got bills. Facts. I still gotta buy material stuff. And then with a business, you can't just spend your business money. Yeah, yeah, facts. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta still pay yourself. Yeah. You yeah. gotta still buy material. You For still sure. gotta buy um um what's it called? When you want to um, brain for it, brain for it. Like uh, when you want to buy for tools or not tools. When you just want to buy, just like not publicity. We go touch like that marketing, back. like marketing, marketing. marketing. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah when yeah, you want to yeah. buy marketing, you gotta gotta go out and market yourself. So you gotta buy these. Yeah, facts. Got you gotta, it. We gotta buy <laughs> door hangers, business cards. You gotta yeah. do a lot of stuff. So all that factors in between you trying to get to the next level, and then you got family and friends. You gotta. You got, and we can touch that subject in a second because yeah. I got something to say about um, entrepreneurship when it comes to family and friends. Mm. How you got to sometimes cut people off, but yeah. you know we can touch that in a second. Yeah. Um, 
it's just a process of doing all that and being able to move to the next level. Yeah. And so when I got to when you when you see the end, when you at the beginning, you see the end, it ain't never the end. Mm. I got the van <laughs> now, but now it's like, damn, I want a fleet. Right, right. I want people. <laughs> I want to put. I want to get workers that yeah. have their faces, right. their faces on the vans, yeah. driving around the city, yelling out, "Mount my motherfucking TV." You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right, so right. it's like it's never the end. Yeah. So it's like even though I got to work, I'm looking back five years ago, yeah. like, damn, I was really driving this 2012 Impala. Yeah. With all these tools in the trunk doing these big ass jobs. Yeah. Now I'm in mean, this luxury, you know, Ford Transit, mm. still doing these yeah, big ass jobs. Still doing, jobs. still doing. Bigger. Yeah. I, I get contracts now. For sure, for I sure. I get contracts because of the van <laughs> right, now. Right, they right, like, right. oh, okay. this is legit. He's serious. Yeah, he this is legit. Real. You know, so it's like, okay. Yeah, so um, patience, man. Yeah. You just have that patience when it comes, when you see the vision, like have tunnel vision when it comes to that. But also know it's going to be other stuff in that tunnel. It's going to be other cars in that tunnel. Yeah. It's going to be other cars you got to maneuver around. You might have a blockage. You know what I'm saying? You might got to get out your car and jump into another car. You might got to get out, fight a couple people. You might just have mm -hmm. to stumble, you know, before you get out that tunnel to see the end. And when you get to the end, you're going to see another tunnel because it's mm -hmm. going to keep going. Keep on going, man. It's going to keep, it ain't going to ever stop. And it's good, though. It's always good as an entrepreneur, man. I'm glad you touched on that, like your five year plan. Yeah. What the last five years at least? Yeah, for sure. That you you've seen the progress. Yes. And you took time to yes. understand like the, the grace, the grace. Like you gotta give yourself grace because man, I started here, now I'm here. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem. People want this instant gratification. Like man, you have to you, you, gotta, you have to go through that to understand. To, to understand you it. Never like, understand what it took to get there unless you actually went through yeah, it. Yeah, went through it, man. You gotta go through it. It's you know crazy. what I'm saying? And so like oh, well, before we end, talk about that though, because a lot of people don't understand, man. Like when you mix business with no family. You got to cut some people off sometime, man. You do. You do. You know, um, that's when the I hard was, thing yeah, about business, but yeah. it is what it is. Prior to starting a business, like if you have friends, like they'd like to hang out, you can cut that. You can cut that goodbye. Yeah. In order for you to improve yourself, to have that tunnel vision, to get to the next level, you literally have to stop talking to certain people. Like mm -hmm. I got a group of friends that I used to hang with all the time, you know, just hang out with, you know. Once my business started doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, I just I couldn't I could I didn't have time for that. Yeah. You know, you don't have time for the things that you love when you you know manifesting your business when you doing your business. You know, it's just all of that has to go out the window in order for you to mature to get to the next level because it's not. I want I don't want to say they're hindering you, but they're hindering you. Mm. They're not doing it intentionally. They doing it just because like they them your friends. You know, they want to hang out with you. We want to go kick it somewhere cool. Sometimes you just gotta say no. I yeah. can't make it to that bar and grill. I can't yeah. make it out of town. Is I gotta, I gotta do this. You know what I'm saying? Because discipline. Yeah. <laughs> it, that that bar and grill gonna be there. Facts. I know you heard this style time that that Florida, Miami in March or May or April, whatever spring break is. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be there. It's gonna be there. <laughs> you do what you gotta do for yourself right now, so you can be a better person when you're going there than what you is. Mm. I'm trying to tell you. That's real. Just leave the people that you cannot, you know, hang with behind yeah. you know leave certain people behind and move on to the next level because they gonna feel it they're gonna tell you damn i think you acting funny i don't i don't even really like the way you act and i don't even really like how you is you know you ain't been hanging on us like do you even fuck with us still i do but I, they they not gonna see the bigger picture mm -hmm. they can't see what's in your head you only know and whatever you tell them everybody ain't meant to be a business owner yeah facts. so whatever facts. you tell them psh, psh, Mm. One or not the other. It's over their head. They don't even go through it. It's over their head. What? You you trying to do this because of that? Man, come on, man. Just, nah. Yeah. They just take a lot of discipline, man. So yeah. discipline is tied into that. Patience. Because last thing I'm going to say is going along that business route, you're going to meet a lot of new people. Mm. You're going to meet a lot of new people who going to get you to that next level mm. that your friends that you had prior to that could have never did. Mm. Small in your circle, keep people around that benefits your life. We want assets, mm. not <laughs> liabilities. Talk you're going to need a lot of assets throughout the way. Yeah. So, them are the people that you want to have along yeah. your path, your journey to success. That's and you're and you only 27, man? 27 with a lot of knowledge. Man, bro, that's some, that's dope. Bro. All experience. Yeah, I yeah, promise you. Yeah, this yeah, all experience. Yeah. This ain't nothing that old somebody soul. told you. Have an old soul, brother. I heard that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I heard that a lot. A lot of people in my past, like I said, like the Cooley, the Lewis Bowden, I'm yeah. that Spectrum, he's seen it. Yeah. When I started working in Spectrum when I was like 18, he was like, you you different, bro. Yeah. You different. You different, bro. And that's just, that really stuck with me. Yeah. That's, that that's, really man, that's me. cold, man. That really so, stuck with me. So one of the last questions, man. Uh, I got like two two questions, but what's next for, what's next for uh, Mr. Maurice, man? Shoot, man. Um, my biggest, see, my I got I got end goals, but I know it's not going to be the end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my biggest goal, because... I know I don't want to do TV mounts for the rest of my life. Yeah. 
I'm literally doing this and posting on social media so I can get myself to the next level. But I know in order for me to get to the next level, I have to do more. I have to expand. I have to go. Yeah. I can't be wanted to go because I want I want, I want to do a Netflix movie. I yeah. want to be on Netflix. I want, yeah. to, be, I want yeah. to be a star. Yeah. <laughs> I got the potential to be a star. I just got to find the right ropes to get there. Yeah. Like when I was younger, like when I was trying to be a star when I was young, it was like, oh, you got to go to call casting and modeling and do all of this. Yeah. It costs money. Dude. I ain't got that money when I was right. younger. But now that I'm older, like it's, it's easy to do that now. You know, so it's like I got to put myself in a certain positions to get there, but I can still do this to yeah. fund whatever I can do towards the future. Yeah. And it's been funding and it's been doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah. So what's next for me, man? Um, uh, this year I told myself I was going to do at least, I'm going to try to, I'm not going to try, I'm going to take that out of my vocabulary. Yeah, take that I out, am. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to do call casting. I'm going to oh. go to a call casting for a TV show in one of these cities yeah. and I'm, I'm going to get it. Yeah. I'm going to get it. Whether it's right now or during the summer or during the winter time. Yeah. I know this year I need to just step out of my comfort zone because yeah. that's my comfort zone. That's my uncomfort zone. Yeah. I'm going to do call casting. I'm going to find a way to get on TV. I'm, I'm, you are, and you will, bro. I'm going to pick you up will. some type of TV show. You're going to be like, hey, he said it. Yeah, he said it. He hey, said he was going to be there. He's speaking you know that right saying? here. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, he said he was going to be there. Yeah, that's dope, so, bro. That's dope. And so the, to end with, man, I always ask all the entrepreneurs, man, if they have a question they want to ask me uh, just for, you know, a lot of people want to ask questions, man. So I was, I'm just interested. Cool. Yeah. My question I ask you, man, is how you feeling, man? How like, feeling? just, Just... In general, with your life, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, how are you feeling? Like, do you feel like you have reached your potential? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you still got more to go? Like, how are you generally feeling? Like, around just people around you, just everything. That's that's a great question, man. I know that's a really great. I love question. to know how people feel, yeah, man. You know, uh, you know, it's crazy, man, because right now, like, I'm, I'm content for sure. Meaning, you know. I work at the shop these amount of hours, these amount of days, Correct. right? Other days are spent with my, my kids, you know, basketball, taekwondo, volleyball. You know what I'm saying? They do a, a lot. They do a lot. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a busy dad. Yes, you know what sir. I'm saying? And so, like, right now in my life, I'm content, meaning at, at the place where I'm enjoying this this season I'm in. You know what I'm saying? The last two years have been kind of crazy with me, man, because uh, I lost my father a couple years ago. And I was, I was, you know, being a businessman, being, being a businessman, you better hit. being depressed. Because you still got to keep everything in yeah, mind. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And your family, too. And, the, you know, it was, it was, that was real big for me. So I, I didn't realize I was depressed. I was going through, I was in a funk, bro. And mm -hmm. the fact that now that I'm, I'm finally getting out that funk, doing things that I love to do, that I'm passionate about, being around my kids, my family, I'm good right now. But ultimately, uh, I know there's a new season coming. For sure. Another new season about to come. For you know sure. what I'm saying? And I'm just... Making sure that I'm that everyone around me is good. Yeah. My, every, all my systems are in place. You know what I'm sure saying? You. But ultimately, I feel good, man. I like I like where I'm at right now because I'm not chasing that dollar, that dollar anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm at that 37 now. Like, okay, I see what they talking about when you get to 40. Well, I know how 20s was. I was grinding hard in my 20s. Was grinding hard. Still grinding hard in my 30s. Yeah, for sure. It's a different type of grind now. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but that being said, though, man, I, I feel good, though, bro. I appreciate, up, I appreciate that question, man. That's, hey, that's, that's a dope question, that's man. What's up, man? Because your 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 day start with you. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah. got to make sure you good. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, like we said before, if you good, then everything else around you is like it flows in the place. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, so yeah, man. man. Nah. As long as you good, we good. We all good. We all hey. good. We, we Gucci, man. We Gucci. So where can they find you at, man? Let everybody know I, where they can find you at, man. Let, I, let the people know where they can I, find I feel, me, Maurice. I feel, like, I feel like I should do my. <laughs> do your spill, brother. Do your thing. We here. We here. You know. Do your spill, man. Yo. <laughs> if you need your motherfucking TVs mounted, all you gotta do is hit me up on Instagram at his name Maurice or visit the website at mountmymftv.com or text me 314-536-1661 and say mount my motherfucking TV. <laughs> yeah. Hey man. Once again, hey, that was a yeah. dope podcast. I'm in Maurice, man. We had another one, dope content. Dope jams. Appreciate you, my brother. Absolutely, man. Till next time, All the vibes. groom three way. Y'all be blessed out here, man. Peace. <laughs>